What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can set up your own free Palworld dedicated server. You can play with your friends and everything else using the power of your own system or another computer. Also, not to mention, in the rare case that the official servers do go down, you'll more than likely still be able to play with your friends if you're hosting it yourself. This isn't using a third party service, so there's no cost involved. That's it. First of all, we'll need to download and install the dedicated server for Palworld. There's two ways of doing this. First one requires you to own the game on Steam. If you do, simply search your Steam library for Palworld and locate Palworld dedicated server. Simply choose install and wait for it to download. That's it. If you don't own the game on Steam, you can use Steam CMD, an official Valve tool, in order to download the game server instead. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Steam CMD program. Simply click Windows here. This will automatically scroll you down to the correct location, choose the one over here to download it, save it and open the zip. We'll need to extract this program somewhere where we'll be finding a permanent home for our server. So for example, if I want to make a server on my desktop, I'll make a new folder called Palworld. I'll open it up, then extract the Steam CMD EXE, place it in here, then we'll right click, choose new and select text document. We'll be naming this start.bat and we'll get rid of .txt at the very end. Hit enter and when you get this pop up, choose yes. We've now successfully changed the file type to an executable one. If you didn't change it from a text file to a batch file or don't see file extensions to begin with, choose view followed by show and make sure that file name extensions as well as hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10 instead, you'll find a view tab at the very top and on the far right, these two tick boxes. Perfect. Now we can right click our start.bat and choose edit or otherwise open it up with a text editor such as notepad. In the description down below, you'll find a link to an article where you can simply copy and paste all of these commands from, copy and paste in this command and save the file. This will start Steam CMD, log in anonymously and update the Palworld server 2394010. We'll close this and run the batch file. This will start up Steam CMD, prepare the environment and shortly after, it'll start downloading our Palworld server into the Steam apps folder over here. Just a quick note, we will be editing this batch file later on to get it to start up our actual server so that every time we launch it using this file, it'll also check for updates and update if one's available every time the server is started, making sure it's compatible with all of our players. Once it's done, it'll vanish and it's successfully downloaded. So Steam apps, common, pal server, inside here we have our pal world server. And once again, run start.bat. It'll quickly check to see if there's any updates, which there shouldn't be. And shortly after when it's done, it'll fire up our actual server in a separate window such as this. Now, not much should happen, but we can navigate back to Steam apps, followed by common, pal server, and in here, we should find default pal world settings.ini. We'll start by customizing our server settings. So we'll close our server for now, because everything that should have been generated is now generated. We'll open default pal world settings.ini with any text editor, such as notepad and inside of here you'll find a ton of commands. Just a quick note, this is a demo file. In order to change our settings, we'll need to copy these settings into this folder here. So we'll copy everything from these square brackets down to the very end, control C to copy and navigate to this folder here. So pal saved config windows server followed by pal world settings.ini. We can now paste in our commands as such and we can edit how our server appears. So at the very bottom or end, if you don't have line wrapping enabled, so view word wrap, we go just to space it out nicely, you'll see some of the commands that we've already filled in, including the max number of players, 32, server name, which I'll once again set to trouble shoots server, but you can set this to whatever you want, server description, admin password, which is important to set to something random that nobody else can get, such as ASDF 9876, close enough. Server password is optional and used to protect your server from random people joining. You can set a server password here if you so wish. Public port, you can leave as default unless you know what you're doing. Public IP, the same goes here. Then Archon enabled, if you wanna use a remote tool to run commands on your server, you can change this to true, but for this video, we won't be touching this at all. So for now, we'll save with Control S and we can now close this file, close the default settings file, as well as our start file here. Heading all the way back to our base folder, Palworld, we can simply run start.bat and now it'll once again check for updates, then finally launch up our server for us to play on, as well as hopefully other people. Let's head across to Steam and play Palworld. 
When in game, head to join multiplayer game, OK, and at the very bottom, you'll see your default IP punched in. 127001 is localhost, otherwise known as your own computer. Because we're running the server on the same computer we're playing on, simply click connect and you'll join your server. Do you note that if you have a password set, you'll probably be rejected unless you enter it somewhere. I removed it from my configuration file before I saved it, so when we connect, everything should work as you hope. Starting, we're now dropped into the server. We can choose a spawn point, and just like that, we're now playing on our own dedicated server. Sweet. However, nobody else can join at this point, even if they're sitting next to you. There's a couple more things that we need to do. First of all, firewalls. If you have the default Windows firewall installed and not a third party antivirus or firewall software, you'll probably get a pop-up saying, do you want to allow it? And assuming you clicked yes, it's probably already allowed through your firewall. However, it's always good practice to manually add an exception. So in the description down below, once again, on that same linked article, I haven't written it just yet, so I'll pull up my Ark Survival Evolved one here. Scrolling down, you'll find a section that looks like this, talking about a firewall. Simply copy this, and it should look something like this. Essentially, 27015 and 6 are for Steam, so it can properly appear on the server list, and 8211 is our game server. And 25575 is the default Archon port if you choose to use something like that. Anyways, what we're going to do is copy these commands, which you probably already have, hit start and type in PowerShell, we will be running this as administrator. So right click, run as admin. If you choose to open terminal instead, make sure you click at the very top and choose Windows PowerShell. Now we can right click to paste, hit paste anyway, and hit enter a few times in order for our firewall rules to be added. Oh, and not to mention the name will be correct. Anyways, we've now allowed the PalWorld server through our Windows firewall and people on the same network as us should be able to connect to our server. For that, they'll need your local IP address. Once again, inside of PowerShell or a new command prompt, terminal, etc., you'll be typing in the command IP config and hitting enter. This will give you a whole bunch of information about your network configuration. What you're doing is looking for the way that you're connected to the internet. In my case, it's Ethernet. So we're looking for Ethernet IPv4. And this over here is my local IP. People will use this followed by colon 8211, I think it was, in order to join your server if they're on the same local network as you, as in the same router. However, for people to connect to our server through the internet, there's one more step which can sound quite daunting, but it's actually pretty easy. That is port forwarding. What you'll need to do is log into your router's settings and head across to the port forwarding section, usually under some kind of security header. What I'm showing you here is a basic recreation of a router. It's not actually functional, but it gives you a good idea of what you need to do on your specific router. There's too many routers to do a tutorial for every single one of them. So instead you'll need to look up a guide for your particular router. This one's just showing you essentially what you need to do. What we'll be doing is allowing all of the ports that we previously allowed through our Windows firewall through our router and point them to our computer. So we'll start with 8211 for both the internal and external. And if it's asking you for a range, you'll put in 8211 for both of these options. We only need to select UDP for the protocol and we'll need to point it to our local IP for the computer in our network that's running the server. We did this previously with IP config. Mine was 1.50. So all we need to do is enter the numbers as you see. For me, it's 1921681. I just need to enter the last ones. However, you might be required to type the entire thing. Also, not to mention, yours may not look exactly like mine or be laid out the same way. It all depends on your router and your network. I'll click add new. And just like that, we've now forwarded the game's port through our network and other people should technically be able to connect, but it more than likely won't show up on the server list. For this, we need to port forward 27015, 27016. And if given the option, you can enter these in a range so it does both of them at one rule. Otherwise, you may need to do both of these separately. Then protocol should be both TCP and UDP. And once again, selecting the correct place to send it to, adding new, there we go. Finally, 25575, if you'd like to use the remote admin Archon feature, once again, both TCP and UDP, setting in the same destination, and there we go. We've now forwarded the game, as well as everything required for Steam to list our server properly. That's it. Now, people over the internet should be able to join your server, assuming you give them your external IP. You can get this very easily by searching what is my IP, and you 
usually it'll be in a separate block, otherwise on one of the first few websites you go to. Just a quick note, if there's more than one router between you and the internet, so for example, your fiber box goes to a router, then to another router, and finally your PC, you'll need to forward at every hop along the way. So your fiber router will point to the next one, that router to the next, and finally that last router to your computer. That way, there's a direct line between your PC and the internet for port forwarding to work properly. Sweet. Now that everything's set up, other people can join our server over the internet and we can play with them as usual as long as our server is running. So, as long as this window is open, as soon as you close this, your server will shut down completely and everyone who's on your server will be kicked off. That's how it's completely free, you're running it on your own hardware. Of course, you can run this on a separate computer, or if your computer's powerful enough, you can run it on the same computer that you play the game on. Just note that it needs to be open in order for you to play with your friends. To launch it up again, simply open the folder and run start.bat. It's as simple as that. So anyways, you now know how to set up your own complete PAL world server. If you'd like to see more on this, do let me know in the comments down below. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.